So I'm Harry Meadley, I'm an artist based in Leeds uh, and is sort of becoming, I guess, a documentary filmmaker in the process. Um, so what I'm presenting here is the first part of a new multi-part documentary film behind the scenes following the staff at Touchstones, which is Rochdale's Municipal Art Gallery, as they attempt to uh, display the entirety of their fine art collection, which is 1600 works, uh, sort of at my request uh, on behalf of the often public complaint of not enough of the exhibition being on show. So it's a documentary following their attempt to realise this almost in, potentially impossible project. This is my work titled Wish You Were Here, um, recent painting that I've made since being on residence in Florida, on a residency at uh, Atlantic Centre for the Arts, and then making the work back here in the UK. And the idea of being here and there, and the sense of place, and a longing, I suppose, for another place. So this figure is hidden and present in this idyllic kind of holiday landscape, but at the same time, She's, she's there, but she's not there. So she's in shadow, but she's part of this landscape. I made the work, I can't remove my weathering, my finger's too fat, and it was made in Melbourne in Australia. I never had the title before, uh, two days before leaving, leaving England to go make the work, but I was watching this morning with Eamon Holmes, and they were talking about marriage, and he, he couldn't get the weather ring off his finger, and he said, I can't remove my weather ring, my finger's too fat. And I just thought that's like a beautiful, it just captured life and just captured kind of everything in Eamon Holmes' little saying about his weather ring. So I thought, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take what he said and, and use that title. The film itself, it's a mixture, you know, between kind of do documentary, real life, and also improvised scenes. And I think the root of the work kind of makes comments upon maybe just kind of just being alive and also maybe links to like alternative universe kind of things. And it's, it's done in a way that it's not linear, but it, it, it re you know, goes back in itself. And the story itself is, is, is jumbled up, but ultimately it's most probably about, about life and death and you know, uh, life in between that, you know, the complications of it and like the absurdity of just being alive, really. Yeah. The work that I'm presenting here is called Hashtag Ball Court, uh, and it's ex an expanded painting, loosely, but it touches on lots of different things. So one of the inspirations for it is uh, an interest in well-being and well-being practices and trying to uh, generate something that's, that uses those devices, but uh, is a way of communicating a painting as well. So um, it's been activated by a, perfor a live performance, so it's designed for a dancer to move and make shapes within the space as well. So that's actually driven and it dictated a lot of the objects and the position of things. So it alludes to something that's kind of got a function and a purpose um, and a possible activation. So it's not, it doesn't remain as something that's kind of static and, um, yeah, there's potential within it to shift and change. I made this work, uh, Isle, um, and it's about um, a journey that I took uh, to and from work on my bike. And now I noticed this, um, this sort of lump of asphalt material on a pedestrian island in um, the Sheepscar area of Leeds. And on my journey to and from work, it became more and more important to me, this, this, this piece of um, material. The aisle itself was quite um, laden with moss and had entrapped uh, lots of sort of localised flotsam and jetsam. So I became like really obsessed with this island, or aisle as I call it. I came to the idea of um, removing it, so I basically just asked the council, uh, Leeds Highways Department, whether they'd remove it for me. So a bit like an inversion of a, um, you know, filling a pothole. Uh, after about six weeks, they said, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll come and remove it for you. And now I've kind of like put it on this wall. I had this steel table made and a, a glass dome. So I, I was kind of like, I had this uh, mindful of treating it now as a kind of like a, a Victorian curiosity. And I think that's, that's really what the work is now. Because this one was made in Rotterdam for a show I was doing over there. Uh, I was collaborating with a, a musician, um, a composer. Uh, he was making dungeon synth music, so this is kind of the 
artwork for the Dungeon Synth album. And this piece, this was made in, uh, this was made in Mexico when um, I went over there last year and spent six weeks in Mexico and I did a letterpress printing workshop which was really great in this place called Impromptu uh, and they helped me print this poem uh, which I then, with the help of some more friendly Mexican people, uh, translate into Spanish and print it in Spanish uh, and then this is the menu in the middle for a bar around the corner from where I was staying which I put the poem in to distribute one evening before I left as a sort of thanks for having me. <laughs> it's a poem about missing someone I suppose and being away from uh, being away from people and being away from someone. Yeah, well, I mean, being selected to be part of the Liverpool Biennial Associate Artist Award really is like nothing other than like a total life-changing thing, right? It's been sort of unreal how amazing the whole thing is um, and really allowed me to become like a, you know, albeit touch wood, like full-time artist and think much more internationally. With the Biennial Associate Programme, the most... The uh, important thing I think for me was being matched with a curator that works with performance. So when I started the programme, um, that was a, 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 an element to the work, but something that's really new. So to actually work with someone that works with dancers and um, knows all about live performance has been really useful. The Associate Artist programme completely changed my life, I suppose. I was kind of miserable working as a pitch framer in Manchester. I wasn't painting really at all and I wasn't writing poems. You know, two years later like I call myself a painter and it's given me a completely new, I don't know, kind of give me a new start I suppose. It's just been brilliant, the whole programme. And my mentor, who's based in New York, Monica, she's absolutely fantastic. I was kind of just making small works uh, basically where I live and fields and stuff, you know, and, and experimenting in that way. But what the Liverpool Biennial Programme has allowed me to do, it just allowed me, you know, to, literally to travel the world and embed myself in different cultures and, and work with different curators, different artists. It's just given me crazy amounts of opportunities. So for me, it, it's, it's literally been life-changing, like, you know. Yeah, it's, it's, the programme itself has, changed, has, has, has literally changed my life. And to show it somewhere at the Baltic 39 is pretty sick, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's better than doing stuff in fields <laughs> on my own, yeah, so it's, it's, been it's been really good, yeah. yeah.